Hey, what's up, guys? My name's Race. This is my friend Jeremy. Uh, we're members of a band called Beyond Affilion, and we're going to show you how to dial in a high gain modern metal sound on the Axe 8. <laughs> So before we dial in this tone, I'd like to point out all the things that are in the signal chain. I'm running an Ibanez S series with a Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge through a stock Axe 8 with firmware 9.04 into my Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 and it's running into Reaper. I've got no plugins in the chain so you'll be hearing just the raw sound of the Axe 8. To begin, I like to dial in my metal tones using the PV 6160 block or the 5150 block that's included in the Axe 8. Personally, I think this is the best high gain amp uh, and I mean there's a reason Misha uses this for his periphery tones for P1 and a good portion of P3. Uh, some people recommend using the Friedman BE model and I think that it's it's very good but it does better for lower tuned seven string and eight string stuff. I don't particularly like the way the overtones are stacked. It's, it's a little too smooth for me uh, on a six string, especially with this pickup, which isn't exactly the highest output. With all the controls at noon and no cabinet, it sounds a little bit something like this. Let me turn the level up for you. Not great. However, once we throw, in my opinion, the best IR, that comes with the Axe on, the Recto with the 57 on it, um, it starts to instantly sound quite metal. So it's a little flubby um, and it's not super defined and I can bet most of you know that we're gonna put some type of drive block in front of this to tighten it up. But before we do that, I'm going to turn this hike or this low cut up a little bit to 60 hertz in order to roll off some of the sub bass frequencies you don't really want. And I'm also going to turn this high cut completely off because in my opinion when you're recording into a box you want to have as much signal as you can to work with so that you can low pass this later rather than have it be done in the box or in the X8. I'm going to move on to the front panel of the amp before I put anything else in the chain. I like to turn the master volume up a little bit so that the power tubes are working a little harder. I turn the depth frequency, or I turn the depth down because the depth frequency is set around 180 hertz. Some people really like this for kind of new metal or sludge metal tones, but if you want a tight, genty sound, you're going to want to dial that out a little bit. And I actually like to turn it up to around 200 hertz, as I found this is kind of the unpleasant, uh, flubby frequency that you kind of want the tube screamer or the overdrive to tighten up. I'm going to turn this bright switch on. I think if you're going to use a metal amp in the Axe 8, you're probably going to want to have the bright switch on. Uh, it just makes it sound a little bit crisper and a little bit fuller. I like a healthy amount of mid in my tone, probably more than most do, but I'm going to crank the mids. I'm going to turn the bright switch up a decent amount, and I'm going to crank the presence. This is how I've gone about finding the chord definition that a lot of people are looking for in modern metal tones. If I turn the amp up, or the amp gain up just a little bit, and turn the bass and treble up just a little bit, you'll hear what I mean. With the adjustments, this is what it sounds like. All right, it's a lot more clear, it's a lot more defined, but you're hearing this low mid kind of sag that isn't quite what you're, probably what you're looking for for a tight gent tone. Between 200 and about 550, is where I've found that flubbiness to be. So I like to bring down the 500 and the 250 on the graphic EQ of the amp. And to compensate for some of that low end loss, I like to turn up uh, 125 hertz. And you'll hear me you hear me say this frequency a lot, but between 1K and 2K, about 1.5K, that's where the real definition that you're looking for is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn both of those up just a bit. Now this is what it'll sound like. getting somewhere now this is this is a pretty usable tone next I'm gonna go into the preamp section and I'm gonna to switch to the 12 ax7 SYLs the hardness immediately jumps up and I found that that's kind of what you're looking for in a high gain sounding amp you don't really want the smoothness of the JJ's or the RCA's I'll also turn this definition knob up just a bit in order to further accentuate the individual notes within large chords you play on a high gain sound finally I'm gonna go back to my basic 
uh, front of amp panel. And I'm going to turn this bright cap up to about 1200 to see what that sounds like. All right. So that's sounding pretty good right now. It's still, a, it's a little, not too tight, but there's not enough low end, but we'll get to that in a second. Next, I'm going to throw a couple of blocks in front of the amp. I'm going to throw a gate to keep the sound tight. And I found not a lot of people talk about how to set up the gate on the Axe 8. I found with moderate high output pickups like the JB, negative 50 dB to negative 40 dB is a comfortable range to set the threshold at. So it's not eating away at your single note stuff. I set the attack, hold, and release as quick as possible in order to prevent the gate from getting in the way of my playing or not being tight enough when I'm trying to do very staccato, chugging rhythms. And I turn the ratio up between 2 and 3, I'd say, is comfortable. Personally, I like to set my Axe 8 up with uh, scene 1 being my tighter patch and scene 2 being my looser patch. That way, whenever it comes time for single note riffage, uh, it's a little bit less choked off if you're playing maybe higher up on the strings. I'll, I'll mess with the ratio. We'll start at 2.3 and I'll, I'll just have Jeremy play and we'll see kind of where it feels tight. All right, this feels pretty good right now. You'll notice if I crank it up anywhere past three, it starts to get a little choked off when he wants to do single note stuff. So around 2.5 sounds good. Uh, finally, I'll throw a compressor in before the drive just to even out the signal a little bit so that the, the single note lead style stuff still comes through. I like to use a studio comp. The pedal comp is a little bit too obvious for me and I, I like the smoothness and transparency of this particular version. So I set the threshold to about negative 18, well, between negative 18 and negative 30 dB. I'll set it at negative 22. I feel like that'll be a good place to start. I found that that's a good, good threshold to set for these pickups in particular. I'll turn the ratio up to anywhere between 2.5 and 4, depending on the uh, amount of single note sounds I'm going for. But I'm going to go for 2.5. I'll keep the knee soft. This is something that a lot of people don't seem to be talking about. And I heard Nolly mention this when he, he talked about how he dials in his bass tone. The quicker the attack is set on your compressor, the less transients and pick attack you're going to get. So if you find your, your guitar tone with the compressor in the front of it is just too mushy or you're not getting the aggression you're looking for, try backing the attack off until you're starting to hear the pick attack come through again. I think 15 milliseconds is probably a healthy amount of time to allow the transients of the pick attack to come through. So let's hear what that sounds like. I might have to back it off. I'll set it to 18. Let's see if that's good. Yeah, there we go. And the release, this is going to be fighting against your gate for tightness. The longer this release is, the more the compressor is going to want to stick around and keep your sound from getting choked off. So I tend to set this pretty short, 50, sometimes even 30 milliseconds, depending on how tight of a patch I'm going for. The look ahead is nice, but I don't know if the algorithm is simply not very intelligent or the way that this particular compressor works seems to eat away at the front of your notes, but... It seems to work against setting the attack ratio far over, so I don't really tend to touch these at all. Finally, we'll get to the drive. This is probably what most people have recommended to use in order to dial in a tight, high-gain sound. Um, I like the T808 mod uh, block on this particular modeling software. It's very tight, it's aggressive, and it's modern. I dial all the drive out, and I boost the tone just a little bit so it gets a little bit brighter. I turn the level up so that you punish the front of the amp a little bit more as these pickups aren't incredibly high output. If you're using something like EMGs or even higher output passive pickups like the Ragnaroks, you're going to want to dial this back and you'll want to go back to your gate and your compression settings and adjust them accordingly considering you're going to be getting more raw signal from the guitar. So before I touch any of the high cut, low cut or tonal options on this pedal, let's hear what this sounds like. <laughs> I'm already pretty happy with this sound. It's aggressive, it's tight, but I'd like it to be a little punchier. So 
I'll go back to that frequency I talked about earlier, about 1500 hertz, and I'll push the front of the amp with that sound. I also like to adjust the clip type of the pedal to be the 4558 diode version. The silicon's a little soft for me, and I found that this is a little bit more metal. I go to the low cut and dial out a little bit more of that low mid mud frequency. Between 480 and 540 seems to be the nice range. I'm also going to turn the high cut up because on the X8 and the general fractal modeling software, on this particular amp model there's this unpleasant fizz around 3100 hertz and around 5500 hertz. It's not something you'll probably find with a normal amp, but it's something you have to compensate for whenever you're dialing in a digital tone. So I'll set it to about 5500 hertz. Let's see what this sounds like. Yeah. See, that's really good. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to throw a parametric EQ on the end of this chain. Now, this might seem a little strange as I've already gone through the graphic EQ section of the amp, but I'm going to use this to dial out that spiky frequency I mentioned previously at around 3100 hertz. So I'll set the Q to be incredibly tiny so that I'm just doing a very small notch cut and I'll turn up to where I'm familiar with that fizz being and crank the gain. Let's search around the frequency spectrum to see where we can find that fizz. <laughs> frequencies uh, and you won't have to fight with this particular frequency when you're mixing in your DAW especially if you're using some exciter or high-end boosting plugins they really accentuate those two frequencies and it makes it very hard to get the tone sounding smooth so with all of these components in place let's just take a moment to hear what the final tone will sound like <laughs> If you find this tone to be a little bit too shrill, you can turn your bass frequency up and go to your graphic EQ and take out a little bit less of 250. If it's not bright enough for you, you always have this bright switch to play with and the bright cap. Uh, the fat switch I found is this unpleasant low mid bump that you don't really want for tight metal, so I would recommend going away from the fat and the brights and the uh, cut switches. And the boost is just a little bit too much gain for an already very high gain amplifier. Other than that, as I mentioned before, if you have higher gain pickups or higher output pickups, you might consider adjusting the ratio threshold attack and release of the compressor and the gate. But roughly these settings, anywhere between uh, the, the, the threshold I mentioned and maybe a little bit, you know, 4 or 5 dB lower or 4 or 5 dB higher, depending on your pickups, will send you pretty close to where you need to be. Now let's hear a little bit of uh, of Jeremy playing through some of our songs for this time.